In this video, we look at properties of convergence series and an example of working with some convergence series. So we have several, uh, several properties that are true when we are working with convergence series specifically. So we'll just go over a few of these different properties. So suppose that we have a sum of AK um, that converges to a number A, and little c here is a real number. Then the series, the sum of a constant C times AK, also converges, and we can pull that constant out in front of our sum. So we can have the sum of c times ak is equal to c times the sum of ak, meaning the value of that sum would just be the constant c times the value a that the sum of ak converge to. Um, we can also say that if we have a sum of ak that diverges, uh, multiplying each term by a constant c and adding them all up won't change the convergence or divergence there. So the sum of c times ak will also diverge um, for any real number. Um, when we're talking about combining um, two series with uh, adding or subtracting them, um, we have the case that if a sum of ak converges to this number big A and a sum of bk converges to a number b, then the sum of ak plus or minus bk um, can then be written as the sum of the AKs plus or minus the sum of the BKs, and this will be equal to the sum of the first thing plus or minus the sum, the value of the second thing. So this is equal to A plus or minus B. So that's true specifically for a case where each of those two series would be converging. We have to be more careful in the case that um, those two uh, series diverge. Now we do have a case of being able to say that if a one sum here is diverging and the second sum is converging, then the sum when we combine the terms from each of those two series will actually diverge, okay? But notice that we haven't said anything about what happens if the sum of AK and sum of BK diverges, okay? Then the sum of AK plus or minus BK actually may converge or diverge. So just as an example, if I had the sum of um, k from k equals one to, to infinity and the sum of negative k from k equals one to infinity, well, each of those individually would diverge. Um, one plus two plus three plus four, et cetera, would, would diverge to infinity. Uh, negative one plus negative two plus negative three would diverge to to a negative infinity here, but if I look at the sum of k equals one to infinity of k minus k, trying to combine those, those series, this is the sum then of zeros, which equals zero. So that sum would end up converging. But that would not always be the case. You could add two, two divergent um, series that would then diverge, or it could be the case sometimes that by combining these terms here, you end up with something um, that causes the overall sum to converge. Okay, so if each of our individual series converge, then we can just add the, those numbers together. If one diverges and the other converges, then the sum when we combine the terms um, will diverge. But if both diverge, we have to be more careful and look at what's going on. We don't just have a general rule for what's gonna happen when we combine them. So the last property here um, talks about what happens when we change that starting index at the bottom. So if m is a positive integer, then the sum from k equals one to infinity of a sub k and the sum from k equals sum m. We're thinking of m as being just any other kind of starting index, two, three, five, 10, whatever you, whatever you want there. Um, those two sums either both converge or both diverge. So what this is saying is that whether a series converges or diverges, does not depend on a finite number of terms added or removed from the series. So we just take away a couple of terms. That's not gonna change the overall behavior of our series. It's not gonna change whether it converges or diverges. Or if we just add a finite number of terms, that doesn't change anything. Um, what would change though is the value of that, um, that series in the case that you start um, messing with um, the different values. So convergence or divergence is not affected by a finite number of terms, but the value of the sum would be affected um, in the case that you'd be talking about a, a convergence series. 
Okay, so let's look at one example where we can um, apply some of these properties to find um, a sum where I've got a, a combination of terms that, that's involved here. So here I have a sum from k equals zero to infinity of, and this is in parentheses, so this is my whole ak for this, for this sum, three times two-fifths to the k minus two times five-sevenths to the k. So looking at this, um, I can see that each of these, these terms um, that are making up what's inside of my sum here um, look to be geometric. Um, and it looks like I've got some r's here for, for something that's geometric that is less than one. So it looks like I am going to be adding two convergent series. So we're going to go ahead and split this up and then we'll confirm that each of those individual series um, converge and so that it's going to make sense to add these two things together. So I have a sum from k equals zero to infinity of three times two fifths to the k minus a sum from k equals zero to infinity of two times five sevenths to the k. Okay, so looking at this, this looks geometric, as does this one. So if we look at those individually, looking at just a couple of terms here, um, looks like that first series plugging in k equals zero, I'd have three, then plugging in k equals one, it would be three times two fifths, plugging in k equals two, three times two fifths squared, etc. And it looks like this sum here would end up being two plus two times five sevenths plus two times five sevenths squared, etc. Okay. So what I have um, first for my first sum is a geometric series with a, with where a represented the first term in my geometric series, being equal to three, and r, my common ratio, being equal to two fifths. So this series converges by our geometric series test since our r value there is less than one. Okay, so that first series is convergent, and I know what it converges to um, because I know that a convergent geometric series converges to a divided by one minus r, the first term divided by one minus the common ratio. So I'm gonna be able to compute what that first value is. Similarly, um, for the second geometric series here, this is a geometric series with a equals two, r equals five sevenths. So this series converges by the geometric series test, that's our abbreviation for geometric series test, since the absolute value of r is equal to 5 sevenths is less than 1. Okay, so since we have each of those two pieces of information, I, I can now, so this is my like aside work here, explaining what's going on with those individual series, but now I can say that this sum of those two series is equal to the sum of that first series which would be a over one minus r, the sum of that first geometric series, according to the formula that we have for the sum of a geometric series, minus two over one minus five sevenths. Okay, so these are two convergent series, so I'm just able to add their two values together. So I'm gonna have three divided by three fifths minus two divided by two sevenths. So it looks like I'm gonna have 15 over three or five, minus 14 over two or seven. So it looks like the value of that infinite series is negative two.